Right now we're at Kids Saving the Rainforest and we're about to work with a truly nocturnal creature. Now, I just met it off camera a second ago and it is armed with razor sharp claws and some ferocious looking teeth. But believe it or not, this creature eats fruit. So if you guys are ready, I think I'm ready to feed a kinkajou. While filming Breaking Trail, I have taken many intentional bites and stings. However, it's the ones that you don't plan for that can oftentimes be the scariest. Oh, oh, oh. Those are marshmallows. These little squirrel monkeys love marshmallows. Now the trick is gonna be to get one of the squirrel monkeys off of the branch and onto my arm so that he eats the marshmallows. You know that? I think they're coordinating a, a plan here. Coordinating. Did you see that? Oh, oh yeah, right above. Did it bite you? Oh yeah. Grabbed on my arm pretty good. <laughs> I guess he uh, didn't like me with the marshmallow. Just because we plan to film an episode doesn't mean they always work out. And this squirrel monkey mishap was a perfect example. That's a monkey bite. On the Pacific side of Costa Rica, the crew and I spent time filming at Kids Saving the Rainforest where we had the chance to get the cameras up close with a rescued kinkajou, a nocturnal mammal that can deliver an incredibly painful bite if you aren't careful. All right, now what I wanna do is just get a little piece of fruit. I'm gonna open up this little crate. Okay, hi. Here we go. Hello there. Look what I've got. Look what coyote's got. Oh boy, look at those teeth. Come on out. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come on out. Let's get you all the way out. Oh, there it is. Oh, you going back in? It's like there's a lot of lights. There you go. That is a kinkajou. You you're gonna go back in there? Oh, you gonna roll over on your back? All right, look at this creature. Now, what I wanna do is kinda keep the fruit close by. And you look at this animal and you think to yourself, wow, it looks like a mix between Something out of the weasel family? Maybe a monkey? Look at this tail. Looks like a cat, too. Or a cat. This is like the combination of so many different animals, but believe it or not, it's related to the raccoon and the kawatamundi. You love papaya, don't you? There you go. Now you're able to get a little bit better shot. Oh, look at that. Roll over on your back. Can I pick you up? Oh, maybe not. This is not an animal that I want to just try to pick up and handle because it is capable of giving me a pretty good chomp. I need to be as gentle as possible. Here, how about you come up on the tree? Yeah, you can hold him by the tail. Oh, no. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. Okay. There you go. Oh, that's, that's impressive. Look at those claws at work there. Here, I got the whole bucket right here. Come on this side. Hi. I mean, you eat right out of my hand. Like Whoa, that. did you see those teeth? Oh, yeah. You can understand why I do not want this animal to chomp onto my hand. Wow, look at how it's able to just hold on to the food and it's actually balancing itself with its tail. Now that tail works like a fifth hand to be able to help it climb through the tree and obviously hold itself upside down. Look at that, it's completely supporting its weight with its tail and its hind legs. Not even holding on with the front legs at all. And look at these little hands. Five fingers on the front toes. It feels just like the hand of a human. Shaking hands, oh, there you go. Here, try this. Licking some fruit off there. How about that? You now like is he thing? being gentle with you or what do you think? Um, so far so good. Now keep in mind that I just met this creature so I need to be calm, I need to be quiet and hopefully it wants to hang out for a few minutes but again I need to be very careful because if it latches onto me with those claws and those teeth it's going to be a very bad end to this episode. Now the coat is very very dense and notice how short all of the fur is and you've got these coarser guard hairs on the outside and underneath it's also pretty coarse. Here, Mark, look, this is a great chance for us to look at the foot. They're actually able to turn their feet 180 degrees backwards, which helps them move in reverse up a tree trunk. But let's come back down here to the head. 
Can you see the eyes from right there? Oh yeah. Yeah, those big eyes allow this creature to see in the dark. Now they are strictly nocturnal. And during the day they will hide in either a cavity inside of a tree or in a cluster of vines. Look at that, he's just completely staying still. Have you had enough to eat? He may be full at this point. He's eaten a lot of the fruit in this bucket. Looks very curious about all these cameras. Surrounding. Yeah, well I have to imagine for a creature that's used to being out in the darkness, it must be pretty disorienting to have all of these bright lights surrounding you. But, you know, for a creature that came from the wild and is being rehabilitated here at Kids Saving the Rainforest, I'd say it is pretty well behaved. All right, well, this kinkajou has had one incredible meal tonight. Ate pretty much the entire bucket of fruit. And I have to say, this is probably one of the most interesting mammals we have ever gotten in front of the cameras. I'm breaking trail. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. If you enjoyed this encounter, make sure to go back and watch as we get the cameras up close with some of the planet's most fascinating animals. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure. Come on up, come on up. Wow, much, much different than when we tried to work with the baby fox in Alaska. Let's see, can I give you a little edge grab? Whoa, there we go. She's very curious right now. Got a little something up my sleeve too. There's a guarantee that this episode was gonna go according to plan. Oh, she's trying to eat my hat. Yeah, that's leather, isn't it? Okay, let's see if we can get a belly rope going here. Oh, yeah, it's nice, huh? To even white oh, and almost. Oh, so oh, she got the mark. <laughs> that's not the it first time again. that's happened. Happened again. This is a very common thing. Animals, for some reason, love the microphone muffs. And now Swiper has literally swiped the microphone muff. As you can see, hey. he's got some other little toys in here. You know, Swiper, we're gonna need that back, buddy. It kind of matches your tail. Here, let me let me just go ahead and take that back from him. He's, listen to that. He's like, that's my toy. They have so many different vocalizations. Squeaks, chirps, little barks. The fox is one of the most vocal of any canine species. Just kind of hanging out behind me, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, here, what if I turn like this and you come right here? Let's see. <laughs> well, I will say this much. I am having a much better experience, a much closer relationship with this fox than we were with a baby fox in Alaska. Here she comes, looping. She's very excited to have us in here. Come here, come here, you. Oh yeah, get my arm, get it, get it. He's tr really trying to get my hat. There we go, get the arm bite going. Just playful bites. Oh, there we go. What is it? You wanna get onto my back? In the back rub? This actually feels great. This is a back scratch from a red fox, and it's probably valuable to note that foxes are incredible diggers. They will oftentimes dig burrows to live in. They can also dig little mice or voles out from the ground. And if it lives in your house, it will definitely dig holes in your couch, which again is another reason that the red fox does not make a good pet. The red fox is an extremely elusive animal. Oftentimes you'll find them in residential areas. They come out and primarily search for hunting or foraging for food at night. And unlike wolves and coyotes, they do not have a pack mentality. You'll often notice that foxes are completely solitary. Ow, the only time that you will see foxes together is actually during breeding season or if it's a mother taking care of kits. Those are happy sounds right there. Those are happy sounds, yeah. She's just playing. You see those little bites there? Just playful bites. Okay, I gotcha. There we go. Look at let's let's take a look at the leaping ability. Watch this. Okay, right. there you go. Are we gonna just not acknowledge the giant zebra behind you? <laughs> There's a zebra. Well, yeah, there's also a zebra right there. Now, we are working today at the Everglades Outpost, which is a wildlife sanctuary for rescued and rehabilitating animals. And Swiper is actually one of those animals. Now, Swiper was raised in captivity, but unfortunately his owner got to the point where he wasn't able to take care of Swiper anymore, and he ended up here. 
the red fox does not make a good pet. Now, while they are very gregarious, they will oftentimes scent mark all over a house. They love to dig, they love to rip things up. And what you guys can't actually smell through the camera right now is there is a very distinct musky type odor in this enclosure. Almost like the musk of a skunk or wolverine, even though foxes are not related to mustelids. Marky's coming up next to you there. I see that. 